Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I have a couple of interesting things to talk about today and the first one involves children who have behavioral problems. Um, the good news is that more and more people seem to be questioning, both lay people and physicians and healthcare providers, the wisdom of drugging children into submission who have behavior problems. I mean medications just become the standard treatment. It, to me, it's incomprehensible that as a society, we at some point just decided we're gonna drug kids who misbehave or have um, hyperactivity disorder. And, and it just blows my mind that the health professionals can insist, and they do, that drugging these kids is not going to have an effect on their brain. Taking drugs, there's always a side effect. In fact, Dr. Campbell says, there aren't any such things as side effects and effects, they're just all effects. You can expect that you're gonna have some negative byproduct of medication. And since there are safer methods that have been proven to work, I, I think those things should be tried first. But anyway, this particular study I'm gonna talk about looked at the effects of early intervention on at-risk kids and their outcomes when they turn 25 years of age. The researchers screened 9,600 kindergarten, kindergarten children and identified 979 of them as having conduct problems. They were either assigned to a control group or a 10-year intervention program that was pretty comprehensive. It involved parent behavior training, and believe me, the parents sometimes are more of a problem than the children in my experience. Uh, uh, child social skills training, some tutoring, a peer coach, and other psychosocial interventions. And then after eight years, the outcomes of the groups were compared. The kids who had participated in the uh, comprehensive intervention group were less likely to have psychiatric conditions. They were less likely to exhibit signs of antisocial personality. They were less likely to abuse drugs or alcohol. They were also less likely to have participated in a violent crime or to be convicted of a drug-related offense. The intervention didn't reduce the risk of all problems. There were no differences in depression, anxiety, or marijuana use, and no difference in graduation rates or employment status. Now, here's the reason I think that the intervention group didn't show up as being significantly better. It was better than the, the uh, control group, but it was really unclear how many children in each group were taking medications, and it's highly likely that most of the kids were because that is that's considered standard treatment. And this is important because we do know that the medications cause alterations in the brain and can interfere with the development of skills like judgment and decision making. And that's one of the reasons why so many people argue against drugging children is at a time in their life when, they're really, when they really do need to learn these types of skills, they stop developing emotionally. So you end up with a kid who's been drugged into submission, later has to join adult life and function and actually never learn the skills to do it. So um, even so, with the drug factor uh, factored in, they did show that bigger and more comprehensive interventions um, are effective, and I'm convinced that if, if used without medications, more kids would have a much better chance of success in all areas of life. I will say one thing that's encouraging to me is that the medical journals are, are filled with uh, studies, results of studies, that have looked at one factor or two factor I'm sorry, factors, and I'm starting to see studies now, more of them. In fact, I talked about one last week with Alzheimer's disease, that there were 36 different things they were doing, and that might be maybe too many, but um, it's so much better than seeing if you give vitamin E pills to somebody, is it gonna make things different, for example. So I think we're maybe making a little progress in the right direction here. All right, now I want to talk about something else that um, is important, and that's thyroid function and testing for thyroid function, because I get emails about thyroid often, and one of the common questions is, what's up with this? I mean, what's happened that everybody around me has hypothyroidism? Well, one of the things is that we're testing for it more, and uh, we're testing patients who are asymptomatic, and as expected, the more testing you do, the more stuff you find. You may not really want to know about it. It may not be clinically significant, but it's resulted in more people being diagnosed with thyroid disease, and as a result, prescriptions for medication increased from 49.8 million in 2006 to 70.5 million in 2010. But the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force cautioned about this screening asymptomatic people back in 2004. 
recently published another article and some guidelines saying that um, they want to reiterate their caution about all of this. So researchers from the Oregon Health and Science University in Portland did a meta-analysis of studies that looked at screening and treatment for subclinical and undiagnosed hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism in adults who didn't have obvious symptoms. The goal of the study was to look at, did screening help or did it hurt? And if you found something and you medicated people, were the outcomes different? You know, it's amazing that we issued 70.5 million prescriptions in 2010, and we don't really have the answers to those questions. Well, the researchers were unable to find any studies that compared benefits and harms in people who are screened versus people who aren't screened. And the fact that tens of millions of people are tested and millions medicated without, that's just astounding to me. But the authors were able to identify 14 studies that looked at one, or more, at one or more of the issues. None were conducted in the United States and only three were considered good quality. And so I'm not going to read through all this data. You can go to the Health Briefs online library and print out um, the article with the references and, and, uh, and see the data. But, but the bottom line is that at the end of the day, looking at things like um, heart disease, mortality, um, quality of life, uh, cognitive function, blood pressure, lipids, weight loss, uh, body mass index, there just wasn't much difference. In other words, all this testing and medicating isn't making people better off. And so the authors wrote, as in the 2004 USPSTF review, we found no direct evidence on the effects of thyroid screening versus no screening on clinical outcomes. They recommended that trials should be conducted on the outcomes of treated versus placebo or no treatment and screen detected populations, quote, because determining treatment efficiency is a prerequisite for effective screening interventions. No kidding. I mean, again, it's incomprehensible that we do all this stuff without this type of data. Now, the authors did note that research showed that subclinical hypothyroidism uh, may be actually better for older adults and that additional research is needed to define the diagnostic criteria. We don't even have that right now. Well, none of this is surprising to me anyway. We keep expanding the number of tests that we do and the number of people for, who are subjected to the tests, and it's not improving health. What it's doing is it's turning healthy patients, healthy people into sick patients. And of course, I don't think anybody would disagree with the idea that you test, and tr you test people who are at risk or have symptoms of hypothyroidism and treat if you find something, but that is a totally different thing than taking perfectly normal people and testing them until you find something, including hypo or hyperthyroidism. So, um, and, and one of the reasons that I think it's important to pay attention to this issue, and I've covered it um, in a few other video clips earlier this year, is that we know that once we place people on medication, it's very difficult to get off. The thyroid gets lazier. So I think we should be darn sure that medicating people is the right thing to do before we issue the prescription. So uh, I think we should restrict testing and treatment to only people who are suspected of and then turn out to have disease, not just when it comes to thyroid, but when it comes to everything else too. So caution is advisable. And as I tell people all the time, sometimes you gotta learn to just say no. All right, that's all for today and uh, the week actually, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it and I will be back to you again next week with more news.